All right, we are back for another episode of the Productivity Show, the podcast where we believe that you can get everything done without having to sacrifice your health, family, and things that matter to you. Hi, this is Tam Pham. I'm the founder and CEO of Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive at work and in life. And today, I'm obviously joined by my co-host, Brooks Duncan. How are you today, Brooks? I'm great. It's meeting day here at Asian Efficiency, so we've had a lot of meetings, which for many people are draining, but somehow our meetings actually go pretty, pretty well. So I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, our meetings were pretty optimized today. Very streamlined. I was, I was very happy about that. So uh, if you're looking for more efficient meetings, we have a podcast episode about that too. Just uh, look for that episode. But uh, today we're going to be talking about our favorite ways of using reminders. So many of you might be despising reminders or even notifications, but there's a very strategic way you can use them to your benefit. And we were recording a podcast very recently, and there's this misconception that people have about us that we have no notification whatsoever, that we're kind of like monks and just kind of live our lives with our phones turned off or no notifications whatsoever, uh, which in fact is not true. We actually use a lot of notifications, but we use them very strategically. So we're going to give you some ideas of how you can use them in your life to your benefit. And uh, notifications are not the devil, right? They're not evil necessarily. You just have to know how to use them. And so if you find yourself missing tasks, appointments, or not taking action on things like you should, I think this episode is going to be really helpful for you. And if you are someone who has the opposite problem where you have too many notifications, right, too many reminders, and other things going on that distract you, I think listening to today's episode is going to help you streamline what you will do with your reminders and how to have fewer of them in your life. And if you're someone who's a little bit more advanced already, I think you're going to be learning a few tips and tricks here today as well. You can find links to everything that we share on the show notes by going to theproductivityshow.com slash 376. And as always, we'd like to start our episode with our top three favorite resources as of lately. So uh, Brooks, I believe you have three of them here today. Would you mind sharing them? Yeah, absolutely. So for our first resource is a popular reminder app called AnyDo. So Any.do. Uh, and it's a popular app for Android, iOS, and a ton of other platforms. I know many TPS listeners have told us that they use it for their reminders. So I wanted to make sure to share it for our top three reminders today. A second one is called Cold Turkey. So it's almost the opposite. It's an app and content blocker for Mac, Windows, and browsers. And it's a one-time purchase. It's not a subscription or anything like that. So some people like the idea of having a blocker, but maybe don't want to do a subscription. Cold Turkey is a, a single purchase. And number three is Rescue Time. So it's a time tracking app that works away in the background. Uh, and then that will let you see what's distracting you. And then you can go in and hopefully make changes later. So like Tan mentioned, We'll have links to all of these at theproductivityshow.com forward slash 376. And want to give a teaser to next week's episode. It actually pairs quite well with this one. So today we're talking about notifications and reminders and stuff like that. Next week's episode, we're going to be talking about focus mode, which is Apple's new focus features. But even if you're not an Apple user, don't worry, we will be talking about some Windows and Android features as well. Uh, so that's going to be next week. All right, Brooks, uh, let's talk about reminders and notifications. Um, I think a lot of people think of them as like evil things, right? Like they're the devil, they're the ones distracting you, they're the ones that are derailing you from your focus. But if you've been studying productivity for a while or been following us for a while, you know the way we look at productivity is, to, is through our T framework, which stands for time, energy, and attention. And today's episode is especially relevant for the attention currency, because the way we look at productivity is to say, if you maximize your time, energy, and attention, you are going to be extremely Asian efficient. And a lot of times people think that reminders and notifications derail them from their focus or what they should be doing. And yes, that can happen. But today's episode is really about how can you strategically use notifications and reminders to empower you? So we have three tips for you here today, um, but Brooks, um, is there anything else you want to share or go over before we start diving in? 
Yeah, I thought we would do a little lightning round check-in. And I'm just mainly curious how you do things, Tan, and if it's similar or different than the way that I do things. And so I thought I'd do is do a check-in about how we handle our phone, because our phone is very, very uh, a very big source of distraction, but also can be a very useful thing for reminders. So we're just going to go through some lightning round questions. I, I'd love to hear how you do things, Tan. Uh, so for your phone, how do you handle your ringer? Do you have your ringer on during the day? Do you have your ringer off during the day? How do you, how do you handle the ringer? Uh, so maybe I'm too young, but I'm assuming with the ringer, he means like the phone goes off, <laughs> yes. goes off when someone's calling so, you. Someone phones you. Does your phone ring or not during the day? <laughs> okay. Just making sure I'm a millennial. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, no, it, it's always on vibrate. So yes, it technically goes off, but it's on vibrate. Um, so I, I rarely have people calling me in the daytime anyway. I kind of, in a funny way, condition people not to call me and just text me instead. So uh, I don't have it really ever go off really. No. See, I'm a Gen Xer. So I actually remember having to use your phone, your finger and turn the dial to to dial the number. So that's that's the difference between Tan and I. <laughs> All right, second question, uh, kind of related, but how about do not disturb mode? Most phones have some sort of do not disturb mode. How are you rolling through the day? Do you have dirt, do not disturb on? Do you have do not disturb off? How do, how do you handle things? So d and it would only have uh, turned on for very specific occasions or reasons. So for example, as we are recording this podcast, I will have it turned on or if people are coming over, but otherwise it's just always on vibrate. Yeah, I'm the same. I don't generally have it turned on during the day. I know a lot of people do. I personally don't. Uh, I have it off during the day, but I also have my ringer off. Uh, but if I'm doing something in particular, like podcasts and stuff like that, uh, I will definitely turn it on. Uh, and then final question. Uh, I think I know the answer to this for you, but I'm just curious. Uh, so we talked about do not disturb during the day. How about at night? Do you, are you able to have notifications and stuff going off at night or, or how do you do that? So I actually have it scheduled. So uh, for context, I have an iPhone and I actually have it scheduled so that it goes on DND &D automatically between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. So uh, that way, when I go to bed, there's no way people can contact me unless you're on my favorites list because there's this Apple feature, right? Where if uh, someone's on your favorites list, they can get it through the DND &D feature. Uh, so I don't turn my phone into airplane mode right? Uh, because then I can't be reached. So if there is an emergency, uh, people can still reach me when it's on DND, when it's on airplane mode, they cannot. So I do like to keep that option there just in case there is an emergency. But in you know the 10 years plus years I've had my iPhone, uh, it's been very rare that that has happened. Yeah, I used to do things that way as well. I used to go do not disturb during the night uh, and uh, would do the same thing for favorites. Uh, however, <laughs> now that my kids are teenagers, I found that uh, and are often out when my wife and I go to bed, uh, I've, I have found that I needed to change my do not disturb behavior a little bit. Uh, so basically, I keep all my ringers and stuff like that on. Uh, just in case they need to call for something until they're home. Once they're home, it all, it all goes to do not disturb, but I don't schedule it anymore. Uh, I used to have it set up so exactly like you, where you know they could call and stuff like that. But what ended up happening is you know maybe one of them, their phone would die and need to call from a friend's, house, friend's phone or something like that. Uh, so for me, I found it's just easier to leave it on until everyone's home. But then yeah, it's uh, straight up do not disturb for the exact same reason. Ooh, I think you're going to like the new focus mode then because you can customize that. Uh, so, but we'll talk about that on next week's episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's start diving into the three tips that we have for everyone here today. So Brooks, uh, would you mind guiding us through the episode? Yeah, let's do it. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to share how we do different things and some recommendations for how we handle and work with different types of reminders and notifications. And we're going to start with the first one, which is reminders for appointments and events. So these are things that are probably on your calendar and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just curious, what type of 
appointments and events that you have reminders for Tan, but I'll start first since I made you start <laughs> in the last section. So I'll go first. So some of the events and reminders that I have are for work events. I basically have an alert style reminder that pops up 15 minutes before an event. Um, our meetings are pretty static at Asian Efficiency. We have this pretty much the same meetings and events at the same time, pretty much. So you would think I wouldn't need it. Uh, you know, like I said, Wednesday is meeting day. Pretty rare that we have meetings other other days. But so technically I should be able to remember when those meetings are, which I do, of course. But what ends up happening is I end up getting, you know, heads down working on something uh, and I almost forget that it's time for the meeting. So what I do is I have a pop-up meet, pop-up alert that comes up on my devices when it's just before the meeting. So I remember to stop what I'm doing, shift my focus into meeting mode and switch to that. Uh, personal events are different. Personal events are almost always I'm going somewhere else. So maybe I'm going to kids sports or maybe I have like a physio appointment or something, something where I'm traveling somewhere else. Uh, so my alerts are a lot different than my alerts are set to time to leave. So uh, by their voodoo, uh, <laughs> the calendar apps know like how long it's going to take me to get to somewhere. And so I have my alert set to remind me uh, when it's time to leave. And that is, I'm usually on the way anyway, but it's like an extra check. Um, for me, my most important habit when it comes to controlling reminders and events is reviewing my calendar as part of my morning ritual. It makes it so that Reminders are just like an extra check uh, versus ne really, really needing them because I already know my day. Um, so that's how I have reminders for appointments and events. Uh, how about you, Tan? Do you do things differently? So I have a default setting on my calendar to have a one hour reminder for every single calendar, calendar event that's on there. So whether it's work, personal, um, you know, a flight that I have to catch or a reservation that was made, whether it was me manually adding it or it was somehow picked up through my email and it was automatically added to my calendar somehow. Uh, either way, I have it set up so that I always get a one hour reminder. So for context reasons, I use uh, Google for email and calendar. So it's all integrated. So you probably have seen this before where, you know, if you make a reservation through OpenTable, which is an app where you can make reservations at restaurants, if you make the reservation, you usually get an email saying, hey, it's confirmed that your reservation at this Italian restaurant is for eight o'clock on Friday, right? And then usually it will automatically create a calendar event on my calendar to say that you have a reservation for that time, right? It's not something I have to do. It's just, it's being picked up from email, which is a setting in Gmail or Google mail that you can kind of set. And so by default, my setting is to say, have a reminder for everything on my calendar for one hour. However, sometimes I will add a secondary reminder uh, for things that are maybe really important to me. So it could be something like a, a podcast that I'm about to do where I'm the guest or maybe it is uh, an interview that I'm doing for me either interviewing someone else or I'm being interviewed, right? And so for me, I will only do that when I do that during my weekly review. And so when I go through my calendar during my weekly review, I'll, I'll look at all the things that are coming up and I'll say, oh, like, this is really important to me. Let me make sure I add a 15 minute reminder or a 10 minute reminder for this. Um, and it also depends, uh, what I'm doing beforehand. So if I'm working from home and I have like a virtual interview that I'm doing or I have to be on Zoom or on camera, then I'll usually set a 15 minute reminder to say, hey, just, you know, make sure you are aware of this. But if I have to travel or, you know, go somewhere or move, then I might set a, um, like a 30 minute reminder just to kind of make sure that uh, I'm on top of things. And so in that case, I might have two reminders, like one hour and 30 minutes. So that way uh, I, I will definitely won't forget. And so it's very rare that I ever forget something because I, like you, will check my calendar in the morning. So I kind of have an idea of what's going on through the, throughout the rest of the day. Uh, I will have an one hour reminder for everything. So I know like every time I see a reminder, like I have at least one hour to do stuff if needed. And if it's really important, I will have another reminder set up. So just... Uh, my way of kind of staying on top of things and what makes it work. And I think I haven't said this yet, but what makes this all work is that by default, I have no notifications or reminders for uh, other apps. 
And so um, if I do get a notification from another app, it's something that I really value. But for the most part, I don't really use it. So uh, we'll talk about this next week on the focus mode episode, but like uh, iOS 15 now has like a summary feature for notifications, which I think is very helpful. Uh, so that way you can still get more notifications, but you now you can get them all in kind of like a chunk at a specific time, uh, which is kind of a cool feature, which is something that I'm kind of playing with right now too. So, uh, but that's getting ahead of ourselves here. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, one thing I used to do, and it, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea. And maybe this was just the default behavior of Google Calendar or something like that is I used to have it send me an email reminder an hour before. Uh, and so I don't know why I thought it was a good idea because what ended up happening is then, you know, you, I still would get my alerts like I talked about, but then all of a sudden my email inbox is being cluttered up by all these reminders <laughs> for things that really have nothing to do with email. So if you have that set turned on, you know, unless there's a good reason for you to have it, it's up to you, obviously. Uh, but if you have that turned on, you may want to consider turning off the email reminders for your, for your items, because usually it's just adding to that email clutter that we all, that we all have. Uh, now, how about Tan for you for um, non-appointment events, so to speak, stuff like birthdays and that sort of thing. Um, how do you handle, how do you handle being reminded if you do, uh, of, of birthdays or do you just like, and stuff like that, or do you just not even worry about it? And then all of a sudden when everybody on social media starts wishing people a happy birthday, that's how, you know, <laughs> yeah. So when you log into Facebook and you go, Hey, it is uh, Brooke's birthday. So you go, Oh, damn. <laughs> Uh, let me uh, express uh, ship something real quick. <laughs> no. Um, so I have a list of about, I'm going to say 25 to 30 people that I would consider very close people to me. And so I have their birthdays on my calendar uh, for those specific days. So one is like, you know, there's a setting in your phone or your contact, right? Where you can set the birthday. So it, it's automatically imported in the, um, in the calendar already. But then I also create a separate uh, whole day event not not marked as busy but just as a whole day event with their birthday and then usually that entry has like uh birthday ideas or gift ideas i should say for them but also that particular whole day event has a one week reminder as well so that's something you can set up i don't know if people knew that but you can set a one week or two week reminder for things uh, so i have a one week reminder set up so before it is someone's birthday i will usually get a one week reminder and then uh, that gives me enough time to usually buy stuff if needed, right? But also if, I, if I'm planning my month, I usually kind of know ahead of time already like whose birthday is coming up as I'm kind of scouring my calendar. Uh, but also another fallback option is uh, my executive assistant will also go over my calendar for the upcoming month and say, hey, Tian, so I want to remind you that so-and-so's birthday is coming up, you know, uh, based on, you know, the notes, like here are some things to think about. Uh, so I always get that kind of like backup option as well to go over and say, oh yeah, this person's birthday is coming up. Um, let me maybe start kind of like putting in the back of my head of what to think about. But by default, um, I definitely have a one week reminder set up. Those. And I find that it gives you enough time for whatever you have to do for that person. Yeah, there's lots of solutions for contact apps and event tracking apps and birthday type apps and that sort of thing. But I do the exact same thing, actually. <laughs> I didn't know we do the same thing. I, ha I have it just on my calendar uh, as an all-day event, but set to free, not busy. Uh, and then I get reminded, although I didn't set up the one-week reminder. So that's actually a really good idea. I think that's a change I'm going to implement as a result of this episode is uh, adding that one-week reminder. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, we record these episodes live in front of uh, our productivity community and also our TPS Plus members. So you can learn more about TPS Plus at theproductivityshow.com forward slash plus. That's our kind of like special upgraded version of the productivity show where you get episodes a week early and without ads and all sorts of other benefits. And uh, we also have our uh, live stream, like I mentioned, and Giacomo in the live stream says, uh, something I'd never thought of doing. He says, sometimes for very appointment events, important event, he said, sometimes for very important events, I have a shortcut that sets a specific alarm on uh, Alexa and his phone via IFTTT. I thought that's a great idea. If there's something like you really, really want to be reminded of, <laughs> you can set some sort of uh, automation with your smart speaker and have it like 
all of a sudden it fills the room with this reminder. So I thought that was an interesting idea. All right, so that is the first type of reminders for appointment and events. We're gonna move now on to the second type, which is reminders for tasks. And I thought we would start by talking about how we're reminded for what we call you know, our most important tasks. So this is something we've talked about on the podcast before, how you wanna look at your day, narrow it down to maybe three important tasks or even better one important task, that one thing that you need to get done today to know that today was a success. And so the question becomes, how are you reminded of our most important task? Uh, so for me, what I have kind of realized is that most tasks we have through the day don't truly have due dates. You know, most task managers and stuff like that have a, a due date field. So I rarely use it unless, unless something is truly due that day. Uh, and that leaves everything else. And so uh, one helpful process that was introduced to me by Asian Efficiency is our daily update process. So what I do is I make a checklist or what we all do, not just me, is make a checklist of things that I'm committing to do throughout the day. And the, the key to this is that everyone can see it, like Tan can see it, Marmel can see it, everyone else on the team can see it. And even if no one else ever looks at it, I know that it's a commitment I'm making to them for the things that I'm going to do that day. Uh, and it's something so we all work off it throughout the day. So I'm kind of constantly reminded of what needs to be done that day because I'm constantly kind of checking out my daily update and checking tasks off from there. Uh, but for the, my most important task, uh, I use this Chrome plugin. It's also available for Firefox and Safari called Momentum. And it has a really nice photography. We've talked about it on the podcast before, but it has this box in the middle of it that says, what's your main focus for today? And so what I usually try to do is type in my type in my most important task for that day right there. So that way, every single time I open up a new browser tab, uh, maybe I'm going to be going to check something out on Amazon or something, but I'll see there what my most important task for the day is supposed to be. And that's uh, like a good reminder. And I've dropped this, uh, just to show you what this looks like, I've dropped a screenshot of what my, what my reminder looks like for today in the show notes. So if you go to the productivity show.com forward slash three, seven, six, you can see a link to the screenshot of how this looks. Um, how about you, Tan, for your most important task for the day, which may or may not be something that's due? Um, how are you reminded of that? So it actually starts when I do my weekly planning. So when I do my weekly planning on Sunday, I try to figure out, okay, what are some things that I want to accomplish for the next seven days? And then I'll schedule on my calendar. Uh, I, I always use DW and then colon, and then I name the, the issue or the task that I'll be working on. And then I'll schedule it on my calendar. And so I know that if it's on my calendar, then it will get done. And that is how I then get notified or reminded that I have to do this thing. So by putting it on my calendar, I'm making a commitment to say, I'm going to set aside time for this. And I then also know if it's actually realistic or not, that I'm able to do this because if my calendar shows that I have all these things, like maybe I'm traveling, maybe I have something coming up, maybe I have a lot of appointments or errands or whatever, uh, I might have to renegotiate then if I'm going to be working on those tasks, right? But by putting it on my calendar, I at least have a place where I make a commitment, but also get notified as well. And uh, I still use OmniFocus as my task manager. And the only time I use due dates is when it's a true due date, which is very infrequent. It doesn't happen very often. Um, and that's where the forecast feature of OmniFocus is very helpful for that as well, is to kind of give a bird's eye view of what's coming up and what to do. Uh, and, and it definitely helps when things turn yellow, right? And then turn red the day of, or when it's beyond. And you go, oh, uh, <laughs> something is new. And so uh, that's how I use that in conjunction. But the calendar is really the first place where I will look at. Um, and then OmniFocus helps with that but also OmniFocus will have reminders for stuff that is due. But usually I try to kind of beat, beat, beat it by having it done way before then. Uh, I'm not a big fan of getting stuff done the day of or when it's due, like if it's due by 5 p.m. or something to then start working at 3 p.m. Like that stresses me out way too much, right? I was the college kid that was always trying to, you know, 
if something was due on Friday, they have it done by Wednesday or Thursday. So that if something needed to be perfected or whatever, or reviewed or whatever, we could get it done, uh, you know, without any, any hassle. But that's the low quick start of me. I know many people who are listening are probably high quick start and they probably thrive when there's like 48 or 24 hours left and then do stuff. Uh, that's just not me. But if that's you, you know, kudos to you if, you, if you are that self-aware about that. So yeah, just putting it on my calendar. Uh, and then for miscellaneous stuff that I have to do, I'll use uh, Siri for that. And that's when I'll use like the reminder feature uh, on my phone. So it could be super random things like uh, as I'm walking home, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to remind myself to take the laundry out or something like that, or to put stuff in the dryer or whatever, right? It's like usually things like that. Uh, and then I'll just put in a random time to say like, Oh, hey, hey, Siri, uh, please remind me at 3 p.m. to take the laundry out or something. And then I'll, you know, get reminded when that time comes. And it's usually a random time that I know I'm usually home at. And if it's not always perfect, um, sometimes I'll say a time and I'm actually might be out. But at least I have that notification now on my home screen so that when I, t when I do get home, I know what to do. Right. So it's like little things like that where I use reminders on my phone very frequently for like little tasks that are just unplanned for, but still have to be done. Yeah. I also use on my focus, and that's how I handled tasks that are kind of like truly do for, so for example, uh, on Mondays, I need to write the podcast ads for these, this episode, which you, uh, which you will have heard, uh, unless you're a TPS plus member and it has to be done generally by the Monday so we can get it to our editor and all that sort of stuff. So I will have a task that says write podcast ads for TPS three, seven, six with a due date of the Monday. And then, uh, it will show up due that day and in OmniFocus. And like you said, it'll be yellow and then red. And I always try to set a time, uh, for it so that, uh, if I don't happen to get it done by that time, uh, the reminder will pop up. But like you, I do my very best to uh, complete the task before that due, that due date. I don't want the reminder. Uh, the reminder should, if the reminder goes off, it is telling me that you really should have had it done by now. Uh, other than that, I do it through my normal process. Another thing I do, I also use reminders. Um, uh, on my phone. So this is an Apple thing, uh, but I use it for our grocery list. So if there's something we need to buy, uh, I will put it on that list. So uh, if it's something that we need to buy today, then I will set a due date uh, in the task for today for that reminder. Uh, so that maybe at two o'clock or four o'clock or something like that later in the day, usually I can run over to the grocery store. I know a lot of people use location-based reminders in whatever reminder app they happen to use. Uh, but we were just talking before we recorded that doesn't work for me usually because uh, I live right beside the grocery store. So uh, it, it would never fire. Uh, so for me, it's usually time-based. Uh, now, if you have a situation where you really, really, really need to do something, uh, and maybe you find yourself continually procrastinating, uh, there are some solutions for that too. I know some people use an app called Do, and we'll have a link to that in the show notes. Uh, it's an iOS app that basically just harasses you until you get it done. And I know I have lots of friends who swear by this app because they find they, they will just keep procrastinating, procrastinating, but Do is the one thing that kind of gets them to do it. Um, I don't think there's a direct Android equivalent, uh, but I know some people have recommended an app called Memorigi. So I will have a link to that as well. Uh, all right, we'll do our final type of reminders and I'm, uh, we'll go through how we do that. And that is ritual support reminders, what I call, you know, we all have daily and weekly rituals. It might be like a morning ritual or an evening ritual, might be a startup ritual, like when I'm starting my day, working day, or a shutdown ritual when the workday is coming to an end, or it might be a ritual to get ready to do a certain activity. It's these like repeated groups of, of tasks or activities we do to get ready to do something. So I thought we could go through some of the kind of ritual support reminders we have, if we have any, uh, like for, my, for myself, I have a ritual support reminder that reminds me by 8 a.m. to do my morning ritual, you know, my reading, my meditation, all that sort of stuff. Uh, now, for the most part, it's generally done before 8 a.m., but that 8 a.m. reminder is, is there just in case to remind me, hey, these are the things either you need, you need to do them or, hey, you missed maybe this one or two things. It's just a, a little reminder. Uh, I also have a shutdown ritual reminder 
to remind me to do things at the end of the workday, like leave comments in Jira, which is our issue tracking system, where I am with the various things we have. Otherwise, Marmel's going to hop on a plane from the Philippines and come and stab me in the throat. Uh, so she likes to check the board in the morning to uh, see where everything's at. So I have a reminder to myself to leave, uh, uh, leave updates at the end of the day uh, and also have things like a podcast recording set of reminders. So this is something that reminds me what to do before a podcast is recorded and then after a podcast is recorded, what the next steps are, just so that I go through and make sure I do everything that needs to be done. Uh, so those are just some examples of reminders that I use to support the various types of rituals in my life. Um, how about you, Tan? Are you generally like on autopilot when it comes to with your rituals or do you have any reminders uh, that you use to help with that? Personally, I only use reminders if I'm trying to build a new habit or a ritual in my life. So if I'm trying to implement a morning routine for the first time or for the first week or for the first month, I will then use reminders as a strategic way to kind of remind myself to do stuff and, and actually follow through on it. But for the most part now, um, I have it mostly set up as a checklist. And so as I'm going through my morning routine, I will just go through the checklist and it doesn't really matter what time I go through it, right? Or um, if there's a specific deadline like you have, for example, by 8 a.m., um, I found myself that by not having it, I give myself a little bit more freedom to do things that I want to do. Uh, but it also leads to more inconsistencies, I find as well. I, I would definitely say like having a reminder will lead to more consistency. And when I did have those set up, I would find myself doing it more frequently. And so now I'm maybe at like a 90% success rate, uh, which is still, in my opinion, you know, good enough. Life is not perfect, um, but I'm not stressing out about it as much as I used to. So I'm trying to take life a little easier now um, by just using a checklist. So if I'm having a morning routine that I want to go through, I don't always go through all the steps, but um, going through most of them usually is good enough for me to feel like, okay, you know, uh, I want to do my morning journal, or if I don't feel like doing a morning journal, then I'll just skip it, right? But at least I have the option to do so. Uh, for everything else, I usually have uh, a specific thing in OmniFocus. So I have a, a, a list there of things that I like to do. So like taking my supplements, as an example, is one of the things that I have in there. Um, making sure that I have like basic things checked off uh, for my shutdown routine. So before I end the day, I want to make sure like, okay, have I planned the next day, right? Am I aware of what's coming up tomorrow by looking at my calendar and stuff like that? Um, anything that is due, have I made a commitment to do uh, something else? Or have I made, made it clear to myself what the next step is going to be? So it's kind of like a way of emptying my head. And so I can go to bed, you know, not feeling stressed or feeling, like, oh, did I forget something? Or like, hey, uh, this is going to be on my mind the whole night. Like I need to figure this out. Like I would rather do that, you know, in those five to 10 minutes like, that I do during kind of like my shutdown ritual to make sure that I'm good to go for tomorrow. And then the rest of the day can be very stress-free. So it's actually relatively simple. Um, but again, if I'm trying to build a new habit or a ritual, I will use reminders, but once it's kind of habitual, I'll just use the checklist to kind of go through it as needed. Makes total sense. You know me, I don't believe in freedom. Got to have those, got to have those reminders. <laughs> Uh, all right, Tan. So uh, we've done kind of like three examples of ways that we use reminders and notifications to help us support us in our life and in our work. If somebody wanted to kind of like take control of their reminders, take control of their notifications, uh, what are some next steps for people so that they can actually uh, put some of this stuff into practice? Yeah, as always, we want to make sure that you leave this episode with an action step. So for today's episode, what I would recommend you do is set a default reminder for all your calendar and task management apps that you use. So if you want to be reminded for every single event on your calendar, make sure you have a default reminder set up for that, whether it's one hour or 15 minutes, whatever works for you. And same thing for your task management apps as well. So if you have a reminder for due dates set up, set it up in a way that you get reminded about it, maybe you know 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours or whatever works best for you. So. Uh, next week's episode is about focus mode. So if you are someone who wants to concentrate longer, focus better, I think you're really going to enjoy next week's episode. And uh, as always, 
all the things that we've talked about today and all the links will be in the show notes. You can go to theproductivityshow.com slash 376. And uh, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next Productive Monday.